Hi guys, welcome to another, uh, well, the first in the, the 2022's revision videos. Um, uh, Professor Rosa is, as always, here with me recording these, aren't you, Bubs? Uh, so we're just going to go through the all of theme A, because for my students, uh, they're doing their mock exam next week, and they're doing a themes paper. The themes paper is obviously set out differently to the uh, religions paper. The religions paper you get question paper with spaces to answer on. Don't forget with the themes paper, you're just going to get a question paper and then separate A4 paper, which is going to have lines on it. So, Thanks, dog. So please don't answer. I'm just going to get this dog out of the way. Please don't answer your questions, either in the mock and especially not in the real exam, on your... Um, in the answer book, in the question booklet, okay? So you've got to put your question booklet to one side, your answer booklet to the other. Now, my students, everyone at Horizon, you are doing themes A, B, D, and E, okay? All, I don't know how to remember it. There's meant to be a thing with letters. All the ones I have are rude and they're gonna get me in trouble. Uh, a, B, D, and E, what can we do? Um, all bats, dance everywhere i don't know like you can come up with your own ones they're probably going to be rude as well that's how people remember things unfortunately so theme a is the first theme we do it's going to be the first questions on there like with all the exams it's going to be when you get to that paper uh, one mark question two mark question four mark question five mark question 12 mark question we will do some of those as we go through so i won't explain them now so first of all okay these are the sort of topics are in there i'm not going to go oh some of these are behind my head i can't get them that way um, we're not going to go through these now, but these are sort of topics you should be looking at. So I'm going to go through all these now in detail. So firstly, the nature and purpose of marriage. Look at that nice font I've got. Oh, I can't reach it. I can't reach out the box because obviously that's not how reality works. Uh, but I found that font. I was very proud of it. I think it's really pretty. Uh, if I ever am not looking at the camera, it's because I've got a microphone. I keep looking at that thinking it's a camera because I'm tired and stupid. Right. So the nature and purpose of marriage. First of all, what is a marriage? A marriage is a legal union of two people, and it's often seen as a religious rite of passage. So for Christians, it's considered one of the sacraments. The seven sacraments are seven things Christians do as part of their faith. Baptism's another one of them. So you can always mention the word sacrament in your answer if there's anything about the nature of marriage. Why do Christians get married? But it's the legal union of two people. Why keep going blurry on the camera when I get too close to it? Blurry. Okay, so it's the legal union of two people. That's an important thing to, uh, to make sure you say. So it's legal. That's why a divorce is so difficult, because you're legally joined. If you're just like going out with each other, that's not a legal union. And so that's why you can break up far more easily. A traditional marriage will often involve vows, promises to God. That's all a vow means. It's a promise to God. An exchange of rings. Okay, exchange of rings. Uh, the wedding ring is normally a plain gold band because it shows the love has no start and no end and that also represents God's love for you. You might not agree with that, but that's what it's meant to represent. So the engagement ring is the one normally that has a diamond in it. Traditionally, the wedding ring, the wedding band is just a plain band. No beginning, no end, okay? Another term that you could use in any answer about marriage, okay, especially a 12 mark question about marriage, if you wanted to start talking about why people wouldn't get married, is cohabitation. Okay, Cohabitation is the idea of uh, living together uh, as a couple uh, without being married Okay, or in a civil partnership. So if you're girlfriend and boyfriend and you buy a house together, you are cohabiting. Okay. Uh, if there's a full question on cohabitation, and there could be, you can talk about the pros and cons of cohabitation as well. Pros, you get to know each other better, okay? Uh, it might lead to a stronger union when you do get married, you get to know about each other's upsides and downsides and stuff like that. Uh, the downside for religious people, and that's mainly religious people who are against cohabitation, uh, would be uh, the temptation to engage in, in, in sexual acts. Obviously, that's going to be part of it. You're going to talk about that. Uh, another thing about the nature and purpose of marriage you could mention uh, is polygamy. Okay, You could drop into polygamy. They could ask you about polygamy. Um, they haven't. I can't think of a 12 or uh, 5 mark question they've asked about this, so it could come up in the real exam or in a mock exam your schools are doing. Polygamy is when you marry more than one person. So you might hear it referred to as bigamy. Bigamy is two people, okay? Obviously like buyers in bicycle or bisexual, two. 
Okay, so polygamy, poly just means many, okay? So if someone is in a polyamorous relationship, they're in a relationship with many people. Those are legal. You can legally be in relationships in this country with many people. What you can't legally do in this country is marry multiple people. In our country, you can only marry one person. However, there are Muslim countries where you can marry multiple people. And under Sharia law, Muslim law, it is allowed to marry multiple people. In fact, the Prophet Muhammad suggested that uh, after a massive battle, men take on extra wives if their husbands had died to sort of look after their families. Uh, so, you know, you and your best friend went to war, he died, so you should marry his wife as well so you can look after her in sort of a legal sense. So when you die, the money goes to her as well. That was sort of one of the ideas of why you'd want to do that, okay? So those are just terms I might drop in while we're talking about these other things, okay? So nature and purpose of marriage. If it is like a five or a 12 mark question, you might need to talk about pros and cons of this. Obviously in a five mark question, you might have to have an opinion or it might just say explain religious views, but it might also say explain two contrasting religious views. So you're gonna have to normally say a reason why marriage is good and a reason why marriage is bad. So the in favour is going to be your more religious arguments. Religious people are generally in favour of marriage. Some religions sort of almost insist upon marriage. Um, you know, we've got Christianity, be fruitful and multiply, the idea we should have lots of children and that should only really happen in a marriage. And then within Islam, it's sort of half of your dua, I believe it's pronounced, which is your life's duty, is to uh, have children and a family. So for religious people, they do want you to get married, they do want you to have children. Um, so in favour, we've got God designed us to be married, okay? Adam and Eve were created for each other, okay? And, and the quote from the Bible, for this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife as one flesh. Ignoring that the phrase one flesh sounds absolutely revolting, it makes me think of like they're moulding into each other as some sort of like creature where they're like sharing a body. That's a really nice quote. It's a bit long, um, so if you really struggle with quotes, you might just pick that last little section and change it to join to his wife as one flesh to show that men to be connected if you are struggling with that, okay? But this is the idea that Adam and Eve were made for each other. You could drop in some other facts you know about Adam and Eve. Don't get too distracted by it, but you know, that Eve is made from Adam's rib to suggest they are made for each other, okay? They were created for each other. Um, you could just go for a simple fact that marriage is a sign of commitment between two people. So let's be going, oh, marriage is a sign that Christians and any religious people can show their commitment to others and show commitment to the relationship so they do not commit sins like adultery, XXX, you know, whatever you want to say after that bit, you want to add in more details, obviously, you're not going to keep it as that, but, you know, sign of commitment, talk about them getting married in church, maybe, or signing documents, those are all things you can mention. Or the other one you can always talk about is sex, okay? Sex for, for Christians and for Muslims should not be had outside of marriage. I put cannot there. I mean, obviously, physically it's possible, but I'm saying within the rules of religion, it should not be had outside of marriage. Um, and especially having children should be had outside of marriage. So you can argue, well, marriage is therefore essential because, quote I've just used again, and we'll look at quotes later on in this little section, but quote I've used again, be fruitful and multiply, okay? God tells them, go forward and have lots of children, and therefore you have to be married, and when you do it you know when you, you have to be married to have children uh and obviously you know that's a really important part of christian life that's a nice one to drop in there okay so that's an easy one why shouldn't we get married okay why should we bother not bother getting married i would probably throw in stuff like the divorce rate is so high so marriage is pointless if it could end up in divorce we'll look at divorce rates in a second i actually got some divorce rates we'll look on the screen um there's no need to get married in modern society they might drop in the word modern society in a question okay that just means like refer to like modern britain as part of your answer okay and this is a nice one in modern society there's no need to get uh, married a couple could just be in love and have children there's no longer expectation to get married many people aren't married and have children so why bother um and then you can bop in this one again which i actually quite like as a point a traditional uh wedding is very expensive uh, now that's an easy fact to say, how do we link it more to the RE stuff? Well you could go and that money could be better spent and you could start saying oh you could donate that money to charity, showing that you've thought about why, like you could then link that into sort of a more religious angle, I think that's quite a nice little argument you could make there, that's a, a sort of a strong one. This could come up as a 12 marker, I s definitely I could see it as a strong 4 or 5 marker, explain two Christian teachings or two religious teachings about the purpose of marriage. I could really see that coming up and doing one in favour or one against wouldn't be a bad way of doing it. I could see that being a nice question. Divorce, okay? So if, um, if marriage is the legal joining of two people, divorce is the legal separation of two people. 
uh, in the UK, divorce is legal and people can marry as many times as they wish, as long as they have been divorced. Okay, you can only remarry once you're divorced. Right, so you can marry, you could marry the same person every year and divorce them if you wanted to. That is within your legal rights. You could fall out every time there's a new, every time Christmas comes around, you could fall out, divorce, and then get married again for Valentine's Day if you so wished. You cannot marry until you have divorced, though. So until you're divorced, you're still married to that person and you cannot legally get uh, divorced until that point. Why should we allow divorce, okay? So, it, there's simple reasons that we're going for non-religious, okay? Oh, the couple have fallen out of love, there's been abuse in the relationship, it's terrible, but you know, that's a nice, easy thing to write about. So in a 12-mark question, don't forget, you can happily talk about non-religious arguments. You could talk about cheating, but we can bring that to a religious argument as well. Um, you could talk about, you know, money problems and stuff like that. So all those reasons why people do really get divorced, in a 12-mark question, you can mention those and milk as many marks out of them as you can. But we're going to have to have some religious arguments, so let's get those in. Okay? The Church of England allows divorce, even though it's not considered a good thing. Okay? You can drop in the fact that, obviously, Henry VIII, who is fundamental in creating the Church of England, divorced his wife, so th there's a history of divorce within the Church. Uh, a term you can use if you want to sound fancy, you can go, a couple should try reconciliation coming together to make peace before divorce, okay? And they even involve often their priest or their vicar in that sort of reconciliation. Obviously with Church of England, it's gonna be a vicar and not a priest, but that's a nice little bit to drop in, and especially the 12 mark if you're really going for those deep evaluation marks, okay? Um, the other one you can drop in, it's a nice one, if one of the couple has committed adultery. The Bible says, thou shall not commit adultery. Adultery is sleeping with someone you're not married to when you're married, okay? So if I'm married and I sleep with another person, that's adultery. It's not acting like an adult. I wouldn't know how that would work, okay? It's committing adultery. It's to cheat on your part partner sexually with someone else. You can link this in a couple of ways. One, they are breaking a direct rule of the Bible, okay? It's against the Bible. It's in the Quran. It is forbidden. Muslims cannot do it. Christians cannot do it. You're not allowed to sleep with other people, Okay, they've broken that. And they're also breaking their vows. Okay, We talked about vows very briefly in the section I said about marriage. You have promised to be loyal to each other. So if you promise to be loyal and then you go around sleeping with other people, then a divorce would be a better option because they've already broken their vows. So it's okay for you to break the vows and end the marriage now because they already broke the vows when they cheated on you. So you could say, well, that this these vows no longer mean anything. If you're not following your part of it, why do I have to follow my part of it? Okay, I hope that makes sense. Okay, the against arguments are just as simple, I think, to explain in the exam. Okay, Catholics are the strongest against divorce. Okay, your vows are a promise to God. Okay, you promised God that you would stay together forever. So divorcing is wrong okay and there's two really nice strong reasons okay firstly you're breaking your vow because you said till death us do part okay you promised to stay together till you died okay it's a freaky thing to say to someone but you have said i'm gonna stay together till we die okay you probably wouldn't phrase it quite like that but that's what till death us do part until death us do part means okay we are going to stay together until one of us dies okay that shouldn't be said as a threat obviously and the Bible also says, what God has joined together, let no man pull apart. Older versions of the Bible often say, let no man put asunder, which is a posh way of saying pull apart. But you know, you can use the translation pull apart. It's a more modern translation, but you might see it in other revision guides as put asunder. That's all it means. It means pulled apart. God joined you. God has joined you in this marriage. You cannot be splitting it up. This marriage has been blessed by God. It is not up to you to split it up. And if we look at divorce rates, Oh no, I clicked the wrong one. If we look at divorce rates, right, so uh, we can see, uh, if you look towards the top, you've got, see these are where the divorces are the most common, okay, uh, and you can see the United Kingdom, slightly less than the EU average, okay, at 1.8, okay, so we've got a mixed population in the United Kingdom, uh, we've got some Catholics, but mostly Church of England, but you can see countries like Latvia, Lithuania, Denmark, with very high divorce rates, suggesting marriage in those countries might seem like a waste of time, uh, but right down the bottom, if you look, and I've zoomed in on it, pew, look at that, like a professional, I know, Rosa, I know, I made a noise, I'm sorry, I made that whistling noise, pew, yeah, it freaks her out, Ireland, why is Ireland's divorce rate so low? And Italy, Italy, uh, too many low divorce rates. 
big reason, Catholic countries. They are Catholic majority countries. They're going to have much lower divorce rates. I would love to tell you if the same is true of Slovenia and Malta. I assume they're Catholic countries. I don't know for a fact. Uh, Slovenia is at the top of Italy. I would guess that Catholicism is very strong there just because the divorce rate is so low. I know so little about Malta that I cannot comment. Um, it's, a, it's a nice little flag. What do you want from me? Uh, but uh, the divorce rate being incredibly low does suggest to me there is a large Catholic population there. Right, next topic, human sexuality, okay? Only interested in human sexuality, don't care about any other sexuality, okay? First two terms, and the only terms that are sort of directly part of the exam guide are heterosexual and homosexual. You're fine and welcome to know about bisexual, asexual, pansexual, all those sort of terms, but you will not necessarily need them in the exam. You can still use them, you can definitely mention them, but the exam board will not ask you questions directly about them. So there will not be a one or two mark question about that word particularly. However, if it's on a 12 mark question about sexuality, yes, you can use those terms, but make sure you're not going on a tangent just sort of explaining all those terms because there's not gonna to be too many marks that direction, okay? I would probably would stick to heterosexual and homosexual relationships, not because you know I'm trying to sow some bias towards a more traditional sexual relationships, but just because that's the exam board are gonna give marks for, unfortunately, okay? So, the main question that's gonna come up is probably gonna be about homosexuality and whether it should be uh, acceptable. That, that's what it's going to be. And for those questions, some of you are going to have to put aside your personal views and, and just explain both sides of the argument, even if you don't agree with, with sides of the argument, okay? So, in favour of homosexual relationships, you can obviously, in a 12-mark question, start explaining your views on like why like everyone is equal and stuff like that. But I'm gonna focus on the religious arguments because I expect most of you to be able to explain an argument in favor of homosexual relationships or against homosexual relationships from your own personal view if you're not religious. Let's focus on those religious arguments that you might not come so naturally, okay? So, God is all loving and love is love, okay? And that's a nice simple argument, okay? If God is loving, all loving, and that word is omnibenevolent, in fact, I'm gonna pop that into the PowerPoint as it's there, because I should use the word omnibenevolent. That's bad of me for not using it, okay? Omnibenevolent, okay? And for the thousandth time, which I'm sure if you've watched any of my other videos, I'm sure I do this every single time, because I'm a loser. Um, I'm gonna make those letters bigger. I'm gonna make them uh, a lovely shade of purple, and I'm also gonna use the highlighter button, okay? If you've spelled omnibenevolent right, it has the word love in it backwards, okay? Uh, so that should always look like that, and you should know that that's there. Omnibenevolent, so if you make sure it's spelt right, or if it comes up in a question and you can't remember if there's an omni question about the omni words, and you wanna know, oh my God, what one was that one? This one, omnibenevolent, love backwards, okay? So you can say, God is all loving, love is love, Therefore, we should be able to love who we want. It shouldn't matter if we're homosexual. Easy, easy, easy sort of point there. For a 12-mark question, you're not going to need to make too much time on that one. That'd be a nice, simple paragraph to get in there. Or you can go for, be more specific, Jesus never directly, especially in the Gospels, mentions homosexuality. Okay, It is mentioned in the New Testament, but only in the letters, really. So it doesn't say in the Gospel, there's not sort of any direct quotes from Jesus about homosexuality. Or... There's bits you could twist into it, probably, but it's a nice thing you can mention, say, Jesus doesn't have strong things about homosexuality. And when he mentions stuff like, um, he talks so much more about greed and about wealth, and so Christians should focus on those issues rather than focusing on issues of homosexuality, which don't seem to be important to Jesus. Especially when Jesus says we no longer talk about the laws of Moses, which is where we get most of the rules about homosexuality from. If that's where Jesus, still, if that's not important to Jesus, then maybe we shouldn't be focusing on homosexuality, okay? But, and whether you agree with it or not, you're probably gonna have some arguments putting down against homosexuality. First one is the easiest one. It's a topic we talk about all the time. Adam and Eve is the easiest thing to go for, okay? And even if you don't believe in Adam and Eve, lots of Christians do, you can drop it in there. Many Christians are against homosexuality because God created Adam and Eve and created man and woman for each other, okay? And that is a nice, simple argument. They create them for each other, and therefore, we must follow God's law, okay? We must follow God's directions. He is creating man and woman for each other, and if we're Christian, we should follow that. Once again, not something you necessarily agree with, but that is a nice, simple argument, okay? 
Adam and Eve, okay? Eve was created for Adam, they were created for each other, so that's what God wants to be a relationship. Then you could link that into, or do as a separate paragraph, the ability to have children, okay? That for religious people, the ability to have children is important, and therefore any sex that doesn't produce children, for some Christians, is wrong. I would focus particularly on Catholics in this argument, okay? Because Catholics, they're against contraception because they're against the, the all sex should be for procreation, creating life, and therefore homosexual sex would be a sin. A quote that my class love and always seem to remember because they think it's funny, do not spill your seed upon the dusty ground. Now this quote can mean many things, okay? Firstly, it's about dropping your seeds when you're out farming, but it's more about sex. It's a bit against masturbation. Do not spill your seed upon the dusty ground. You're not going to get someone pregnant when you're doing that on your own, not to be too rude. Do not spill your seed upon the dusty ground. Don't use a condom. The condom is stopping the seeds, your sperm, getting to the egg. Do not spill your seed upon the dusty ground. And homosexual sex or sex that doesn't involve like trying to have a baby would be spilling your seed upon the dusty ground. So you could drop that quote in there as well. So you know, the idea that we should be having children, you can link that to homosexual sex. And finally, it is forbidden directly in the Bible, okay? In the Old Testament, and it is in, the, the main quote is in Leviticus, um, which is a book that many Christians don't follow the other rules from. It's the one that lists don't eat pork and stuff like that. But it does say, a man who lies with a man should be stoned. By stoned, it means hit with stones. It doesn't mean anything to do with drugs, okay? A man should be stoned. A man who lies with a man should be stoned. So, once again, you might fiercely disagree with that, but you'd put the argument forward and then you would do the counter arguments in a 12 mark question, okay? Or if it's a five mark question with two contrasting views, you would just do those sort of two paragraphs, okay? So if we have a look at a five mark question like this, okay, it isn't that difficult a question, okay? So you might do for your first one, and I'm literally gonna answer this in front of you now, okay? So it's a five mark question, explain two religious beliefs about homosexual relationships. It could be two, and we could change the word there, and it could become two contrasting religious beliefs of homosexual relationships, and that just means two opposite sides. Or it could be two, and it could change to similar. Oh no, how was I do that right? Similar religious beliefs about homosexual relationships. That would just mean you're gonna do two reasons why you agree with it. I'm just gonna keep it as two religious beliefs. I'm gonna do contrasting. I'm gonna do one in favor, one against, because I think that shows you the strength of the arguments, okay? So my first one is gonna be, uh, I'm going to do why some Christians are in favour of homosexuality. I'm going to go, so I'm going to go, uh, that's awful writing, helps if I can hit the right buttons. Uh, one Christian belief about homo, see I'm looking at the camera while I'm typing, how amazing is that? Homosexual relationships is that they are ex ah, acceptable as God is om ooh, omni benev Violence. Check my spelling, it's got love backwards in it. I'm happy with that. This means he is all loving. Therefore, always throw a therefore in there. Examiners love therefore. This means that God would want you to be happy with whoever you love. Okay? It's a simple argument. I'm not going into too much detail. I've explained homosexual relationships. God is omnibenevolent, I've thrown some religious knowledge in there, this means he's all loving, I've explained, and I'm then linked it back to the question, God will be happy with whoever you love. It's not a very complicated one. I'm not gonna get my third mark, because it's five marks, but I'm gonna get two marks out, because I've not thrown any quotes in there. I'm saving my quote for the other side of the argument, because I've got a really nice, simple quote for this one. Okay? However, some Christians, and I'm gonna focus on Christians for both sides, but you could, because it just says religious beliefs, you could go on Muslim argument, and there are strong Muslim arguments against homosexuality as well. It's forbidden in the Quran, it can be punished with death under Sharia law. Those are ones in there, so you could do the same sort of rules for that, okay? But I'm gonna focus on Christians. However, some Christians are against homosexual relationships, as it uh, says in the Bible, that it is wrong uh, as the couple cannot have children. Um, now I'm gonna use a quote, I didn't mention this one. The Bible says, be fruitful and multiply, great quote to use. That means go and have lots of children. Uh, oh, whoops. And homosexual couples cannot 
do this naturally, okay? Now, in a 12 mark question, so I'm just gonna have some water. I don't know if you've tried this, it's unbelievable. It's like Coca-Cola, but like see-through, it's amazing. Um, in a 12 mark question, you would then put another counter argument. You could put like loads of counter arguments on that and be like, however, in modern society, you know, and all these sort of things, you could cut apart these arguments and come to a conclusion. But this is a five mark question. You've got your quote in there, that's an easy five marks. And I've only really used four sentences, four not very long sentences, okay? This would be a nice, simple answer. I don't know how many words individually I've used there, but not a huge amount, okay? If you are concise and sensible, you can get all the marks on a five mark question relatively quickly. I'm not saying don't fill up the box if you don't have to, but try and be sensible and think, right, am I just waffling on here? Have I answered the question? Look at the question and make sure everything you're saying is answering it, okay? Like, I didn't need to go into too much detail about anything else. I was like, right, this is all just answering the question, okay? Nice one. Contraception, okay? Contraception is any method that is used to prevent pregnancy, okay? A method is used to prevent pregnancy while having sex, I should say. Obviously, the, the easiest way to prevent pregnancy is not having sex, okay? I keep staring down the microphone like it's a camera because it's got, like, it looks a bit like a camera. I am an idiot, okay? Contraception is something that prevents pregnancy during sex. The most effective way of preventing pregnancy is a word called abstinence. Abstinence is to abstain, to not do something. So if you don't have sex, obviously you're, you're most likely not to become pregnant unless you're the Virgin Mary or in a very tricky situation where you know somehow you've been artificially inseminated, I suppose. But most people are not going to be having, getting pregnant if they've not had sex. Contraception is to stop you having babies when you are having sex. Contraception includes hormonal methods and barrier methods. Hormonal methods are tablets, pills, patches, um, the, the, what's it called, the one in your arm? Implant, thank you. Why am I saying thank you? Why am I saying thank you? I'm just too tired. Um, anything that releases a hormone that stops the body getting pregnant. Those at the moment are exclusively taken by women. The, the male pill is being uh, developed, isn't yet available on the market, but will exist one day. That would be a male hormonal treatment. They all stop pregnancy in different levels of uh, effectiveness, but they do not necessarily stop, well, they do not stop sexually transmitted diseases. The ones that stop sexually transmitted diseases are what are called barrier methods. Barrier methods is saying that there's a barrier between the sperm and the uh, uterus, and those methods normally put a barrier between any fluids exchanging between the two people. This would be stuff like condoms and the femidom, uh, particularly uh, the condom and the femidom. The condom being the most widely used sort of form of contraception, stops the transfer of sperm towards the egg, but also stops uh, the transfer of bodily fluids and diseases. Okay. Now, natural contraception is methods of contraception used to stop someone getting pregnant uh, that is not anything that is man-made or created. Th those are sort of the the catholic ones are one called the withdrawal method where towards the end of sex you just stop you do not have any sex anymore and the person does not ejaculate at that point okay uh, so sperm are not released into the womb and the other one is the uh, rhythm method the rhythm method is a woman looks at her cycle and along the month she goes ah on the 14th of october to the 15th of october i'm least likely to get pregnant so we are going to have sex in those days so we don't get pregnant it's a good plan, not always 100% successful because, um, well, uh, because that's not the best actual plan because bodies don't work the clockwork. Should we be allowed to use contraception? In favour, Church of England. Yes, you should. You should be able to choose how many children you have. You should only have the number of children you should look after, okay? You do not want to have children who cannot be looked after. God is all loving. He wants us to have good and happy families. It allows you to avoid disease. This is a good thing. God does not want you to suffer. He would not want you to get HIV or AIDS. He would not want you to get syphilis. Therefore, contraception is a good thing. And the Church of England allow it. It allows us to control our bodies and have freedom over it. Against Catholics, okay? Catholics are going to be against most of the ideas we talk about. They're going to be the stricter against it, okay? In most of this themes paper, if you want to say who's going to be against these things, until we get to the war section, it's going to be Catholics for certainly abortion, euthanasia, contraception. Catholics are going to be against it, okay? Sex is for procreation, creating life. 
Do not spill your seed upon the dusty ground. Okay, I used that quote before. Easy peasy. God wants you to have many children. It promotes church growth. If we want the church to grow bigger and bigger and bigger, we need to be having lots of children. So you can link the idea of contraception being bad to linking the church growing. And that's why Catholic countries often have bigger families and stuff like that, and the church therefore grows. Okay, it's kind of Christians want the church to be bigger. They want the church to be bigger because then there's more people worshiping God. So therefore, no condoms, have more sex, have more babies, be fruitful and multiply. Sexual relationships. Oh, we talked about these words before. Adultery, a sexual relationship uh, between a couple not married to each other, but married to or in a relationship with others. Sometimes called an affair. An affair encapsulates all of the aspects of it, like the emotional side of it as well. Adultery is just the act of sex within that. Procreation, sex between people that is intended to create a new life. So you see the word procreation, you're creating life. That's when you see the word creation, procreation, you're in favour of creating new life. Okay. Fornication, sexual relationships between people not married to each other. So religious people, they are against fornication. Fornicating would be considered a bad thing. And celibacy, not having sex. A priest is celibate, a monk is celibate, a nun is celibate. Some people who aren't religious are celibate through choice. I guess some people are celibate because they're not having sex with anyone. Many reasons. Okay, so. Is this... Oh, that was a really big scotch egg. I forgot that was in here. Here's a really big scotch egg. I was really impressed by it. Oh, I mean, look at it. Such a big egg. Wow. Okay. Uh, sorry. Back to twelve mark question. Okay. It is wrong to disprove of homosexual relationships. Okay. I'm not actually going to answer this question, uh, but that could be like a twelve mark question. Okay. The reason I put this one in here because it was in a bank of potential questions. Be really careful about whether you're agreeing or disagreeing with a question like this. The, the tricky bit is it is wrong to disapprove of homosexual relationships. So it's a double negative. What a pain to put a double negative in a question, okay? Because what's that saying? It's saying, like, it's wrong to disapprove. So it's saying it's okay, you have to approve of homosexual relationships. It's saying it's wrong to be against them. So if you're agreeing with this, if you're saying, I agree with this, you're saying that homosexual relationships are a good thing. And if you're disagreeing, you're saying they're a bad thing. It's just a real pain little thing. Just make sure you're getting it the right way round, okay? If you are not sure, okay, and you're not sure, you're like, oh my God, there's two negatives, I'm not sure, okay? Focus on what the topic's about, homosexual relationships, and say, okay, some Christians uh, disagree with homosexual relationships because then you're at least answering the question and you're not referring to the statement itself, okay? You're taking the statement out of it because normally you would say, some Christians agree with this statement, but if you're like, I don't really know what the statement's saying, I'm confused about whether it's an agree or disagree, just focus on the two important words, homosexual relationships, and say the Christians agree or disagree with that, okay? That's just a little tip there. Oh, look at that scar check. That is incredible. Okay, uh, the roles of men and women. Roles of men and women. Gender equality, giving people the same rights and opportunity, regardless whether they are male or female. Okay, so if you have gender equality, you're given equal rights. When women were allowed to vote uh, during the sort of uh, during the uh, the suffragettes movement, uh, that was a movement towards gender equality. Okay, that is gender equality, being treated equally. Okay, um, so are Christians in favour of gender equality or against it? Okay, and a focus on Christianity and all of these, just because I think for themes paper. It's an easy one to do. Obviously, you can talk about any religions you like, but I've just tried to keep it nice and simple, just focusing on Christianity. In favour, most Christians believe that all people are created equal in the image of God, and so should be treated equally. It doesn't matter whether you're male, uh, male or female. Everything is about people being created equally in the image of God. God created all people, creates Adam and Eve, and therefore we are all equal in the eyes of God. And then Jesus says, there is neither Jew, nor, or it's actually not Jesus speaking directly, it's, it's a quote from something uh, talking about Jesus. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you're all one in Christ Jesus. Okay, And it does do it that way round for some reason. Okay, um, If you are really struggling to remember that quote, um, you could just try and remember male nor female. It would be much shorter, but if you needed to sort of shorten it down, go like, in the Bible, it says there are not male nor female. Um, I might take the last two sections together, male and a female, for you're all one in Christ Jesus. If you can remember the whole quote, great, but some people struggle to remember full quotes of that sort of length. So male or female, for you're all one in Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter you know, your gender, 
you're all one in Christ. Jesus loves us all, okay? And then you can drop in omnibenevolence there. God is all loving. He loves us all equally. We're all going to go to heaven together, so it doesn't matter whether you're male or female. These are all strong arguments that all people are equal, okay? Men and women are equal. Nice ones. I think the against ones might be at gut instinct a little bit harder, but actually there's some quite simple ones we can go to, okay? Uh, some Christians may argue uh, that examples of the Bible reflect traditional gender roles. So what I mean by that is that the Bible suggests that men and women are not equal and have different roles, that we have different roles in society. And you can link that to Adam and Eve. Adam is created first. Eve is created from his rib. This suggests that Adam is superior to some Christians. Okay, They're like, Adam is the more important figure. He's more important, so you should focus on Adam first, and he's more important than Eve. They were not created equally. Adam is created from the dust of the ground. Eve is just a rib that is pulled out. Adam is more important. Um, and then you could even focus on the fact that Eve is the first one to sin in that situation. When we talk about the temptation, it is Eve who's tempted by the serpent, the devil. Eve is tempted and Adam eats it second. And then God separates men and women at that point with the punishments. Women are given the punishment of pregnancy. Um, men are given the punishment to work in the fields. And you could argue in a 12 mark question that that shows that men and women are, have not got equal roles and are therefore not, they don't need to be treated equally. Um, you could then put, as like in the, your conclusion, are they, they have different roles, but they're still equal in God's eyes. But then a nice little quote to throw in at the end, women must remain silent in churches. Women must remain silent in churches. Now, for most Christians, this goes, or for a lot of Christians, not most, for a lot of Christians, this refers to they shouldn't lead church services. And it's one of the big reasons why Catholics do not allow female priests, female bishops, female cardinals, or a female pope. They do not allow that because women must remain silent in churches. It is a man's job to lead in the church. So they're not meaning women must remain silent in church as in they come into the church and they can't talk to anyone, they can't sing the hymns. It generally is taken to mean that women cannot lead a church service, okay? whereas men can. So the priest is always a man. And is that the last one? Oh, some two mark questions, okay? Here's some two mark questions, okay? Give two reasons why people divorce, okay? So that's an example of a good two mark question. Give two purposes of a family. That's one that could come up. So you talk about raising children. Uh, you could talk about um, supporting each other. Uh, you could talk about um, being able to financially uh, look after uh, younger people and stuff like that. Like, it's a strange one, two purposes of family. If that's a too much question, there's not many things you can say that are sensible that would be wrong. I think you should be able to get a good on that. Give two religious beliefs about same-sex marriage. That's going to be the same as sort of homosexual relationships. Don't forget, Christians are going to be stronger against it being a marriage, maybe, because that's sort of a union in the eyes of God. So I might say that's not okay. So you could talk about that. Uh, give two religious beliefs about the nature of the family. You could use terms like nuclear family, okay, traditional families and stuff like that. Um, about the nature of the family, that you must be married before you have children, you could drop into a question like that one as well. Uh, and then you could even talk about that Christians are against same-sex families because they don't want, and some Christians do not want homosexual couples having children because it's not considered natural. You could talk about how Catholics want you to have many children, be fruitful and multiply, have a big family, and so church, grow the church. Same sort of as the first one in two purposes of a family. Use of contraception, we talked about that one, okay. Church of England in favour, stop diseases, choose how many children you have. Catholic against it, not natural. Uh, sperm are there to get to the egg, okay? Uh, two reasons why people get married. It could be as simple as to show their love to people, to show their commitment to each other, to be bonded in the eyes of God in order to start a family, in order to have sexual relationships. Give two reasons why people have sex before marriage, okay? I mean, don't be too crass on this one, okay? But if it was like to show their love to each other, to make sure they're sexually compatible uh, for enjoyment, okay? Like for pleasure, that is absolutely fine. You'll get marked for that, okay? One, don't be too squeamish and worried about saying those things, but obviously don't be too rude in that question either. And finally, quotes. So I tried to see quotes, uh, some other quotes I didn't actually mention all the way through. You shall not commit adultery. That one is an absolute classic. I'd love to see that one in there. Okay, You should not commit adultery. Anything about sexual relationships, you can drop that one in there. Flee from sexual immorality. Okay, So you should only be having uh, sex with the right people, especially adultery. I thought it was just another nice quote because it's only four marks long. Okay, A lot of Christians would say that suggests you shouldn't be having homosexual sex either. It's sexual immorality. You should only be having sex with the person you're married to, certainly. Love thy neighbour, treating all people equally. You could drop that one in there. 
that's always your backup quote. A man who lies a man should be stoned. We talked about that one earlier. Reference to homosexual relationships. Be fruitful, increase in number. Okay, Often said as be fruitful and multiply. Either of those would be acceptable. I put it this way around just in case you see it somewhere else. But I always do be fruitful and multiply. But be fruitful, increase in number might stick in someone's head. Anyone who divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery against her. That's Jesus talking in that one directly. If you divorce and you get remarried, you're cheating on your old wife, according to Jesus. So he doesn't want you to get remarried. He wants you to stick with the person you marry the first time. Honour your father and mother. That could be about the nature of family. I thought that was a nice one to drop in there. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. You could show that this shows that God created man and woman and he created them equally at this point. Okay, And that's just a nice way to talk about that. I thought that was a nice quote at the end. Once again, long quote. You might remember all of it. Maybe you just remember that last section. Male and female, he created them to suggest that God created all people. He created men and women equally. And I think, have I got any more on this? Let's click the button and see what happens. I think it's going to go to a white screen. Just a white screen. Okay, if there are any questions, obviously, if you go to Horizon, I know people who don't go to Horizon watch these. I don't, I don't know if comments are on, on these. I'm not sure if comments are turned on on these, but feel free if the comments are on to leave a question and I'll try and address it in another video. Uh, if you are at Horizon, uh, just send me an email or come and speak to me in my classroom and I'll try and address something like that in a video or I'll just tell you then and there. Uh, good luck in the mock exam uh, next week as it is. Rosie, you want to say bye-bye? No, she doesn't. She hates you all. Oh, we've got to look at that Scotch egg again, just quickly. Look at it. Look at that Nescafe in the background. I love a Scotch egg.